Well, what's the crack, everybody? How are you getting on? You're all very welcome to the Ramble Pod. I think I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I think we're about 89. Are we eight, number eight? I, I'll know when I'm putting this up. So you'll go, how do you... One's done before the other, but sure, look it. I do know that we... This is 249th episode put up. So between Buckshot and Ramble Pod, 249. Tomorrow's already locked in. Tomorrow's already locked in, so that'll be 250 done tomorrow. Oh, Jesus is you. So back resuming... We've been doing some live stuff. What's the crack? Today actually is Monday, but I'll put this out Tuesday morning. So this, as you'll hear this, this will be uh, Tuesday the 12th of May, 2019. 2020. That's, there we are, people. There we are. That's where my head is at right now. It's wishing it was a year ago. God, a year ago was lovely, wasn't it? Huh? You think... Of all the hanging around you did with people. All the handshaking you did with people. Huh? You'd swear. You'd swear it never happened. Huh? 200 and... How many days? No. I suppose we're... No, we're not. We're probably 100 and odd days into this shit, are we? At this stage, realistically, like that it's been around. Oh, well. Oh, well. It is what it is. Yeah, I've been doing a bunch of live ramble pods for people who have or haven't been tuning in. Uh, they've been going out on Sunday nights. We're getting progressively better with them. Progressively, I'm getting more used to actually how the whole system works. So I... Yes, firstly, thank you very much to everybody who jumped on board. Thank you very much to the Patreons. Uh, new headset and new lighting system coming and new webcam coming. Right now I'm using the Mevo, which is grand if you're streaming live only directly using it. But really, what I want to use that for properly is interviews. So when I get back to actually face-to-face with people, it's brilliant because it cuts back and forth itself. It does its own self-editing. So that's it, it's, it's hilarious. I have three cameras, all good quality yokes, but not good for what I need right now in isolation. So I've ordered a, a decent, a decent level webcam on the way, along with some decent lighting. Because that's my big problem at the minute. Also... Anybody who was tuning in and looking at it, it was, you see, it's easy enough to, to download from your own phone, to be downloading the, the stream, but when you're uploading it, which is why, thick bastard that I am, anybody that watched last night's one, or Sunday night's one, Gordo basically, Gordo from those conspiracy guys, Jesus, name drop it, it just, just every single show has to have his name, and <laughs> he basically jumped on and went, look, I'll run it from my side, and that way you can just host as you host. Because he's all, like, ridiculous fucking gear. So I went, yeah, no worries. And didn't do something that... One little thing that I didn't note down, that I didn't do, and I started to record... Basically, we started recording it twice. So, hence the the, the drop in quality. That would be all. A, a teething problem. I'm glad there's these teething problems. Because, yeah, I hate seeing these schlick bastards. And you go, how the fuck? Because you know they just threw a ton of money behind it and got some, you know, pro-level fuckers in. This is... You're on board with me because of the Patreons, basically paying to fucking help get the gear and all the rest of it this is why this is the good shit we're learning we're all learning together so by next week we should have it in good old shit I'm thinking of doing next one next, last night was uh, about drinking Martin Maloney from the, the Hardy Box jumped on as well he was he was actually in a pub drinking in Sweden the rotten bastard he was actually in a pub although it didn't look like the most crack ever do you know what I mean I don't know how Swedish pubs are anyway but mm, to be fair it didn't look like the most <laughs> It didn't look like savage crack. You still had to keep loads of distance from everybody. So, and they're suffering badly with COVID, but they're driving on regardless. Fuck it. It kills a few of us. Sure, so what? It'll burn itself out. I'm guessing it's their attitude, but I don't know. Um, But yeah, last night's one was drinking. And I'm thinking about doing school days. The crack from school days, because I've plenty to talk about there. I, the means now of throwing up pictures and stuff like that so everybody watching can see it. So, yeah, we've jumped two phases. Phase one was grand, but everybody's picture was a bit different because they were all on different devices. Now we've restreamed it through another thing and it's fucking coming out a bit normal. We can see the comments on one side. It's just, it's getting schlicker, lads. It's getting schlicker. But also, myself and Gordo have come up with an idea because, unfortunately, stand-up in its normal form just isn't really working online. It's just not working. Not without a visceral audience there. And I know it's it's... There's some trying to do their best, like Anne Marie was saying last week. That you know the uh, the audience are. There's a couple of members of the audience looking back at you in uh, on the Roshin Doves website and everything, and that's you know that's pushing it, but as best they can. 
unfortunately the, the you know you're bringing a, a gun to a knife fight that's the you know that's the reality of it stand up ain't fucking working like my listenership has gone up brilliantly through this but I'd love to be doing stand up for you as well but it's not it's just you gotta bite the bullet and say it ain't fucking working so we've come up with a far better schlicker idea altogether for entertaining people with a bit of humour while in separation and isolation so it should be we'll be working it out over the, over this week and hopefully by the end of the week we'll we'll put a couple of bits and pieces together and we should have something before the weekend please God please God if we can work it out correctly so it will be yeah should be a bit of crack it's it's it doesn't demand the interactivity the interactivity is that a word fuck I think I just invented a word the interactivity of the audience it's they're on a plate for you if you're wondering why you can hear birds tweeting and all the rest of it, I said, fuck it. It's actually a fine day. I'm going to just go outside. Go outside. And also, it's just to test the whole lighting theory, which I did not go to college for and everything else, so I don't have a big rigging of light. But I just wanted to go outside anyway, and this has actually proven lovely. But of course, some fucker with a lawnmower starts up as soon as I hit the red button. <sighs> Although silage season has started, which I don't know, always fills the culture in me with a bit of fuck. I say culture in me. There is nothing else in me. <laughs> Always fills me with a little bit of happiness. No one, no one good. To, I suppose as you knew the summer holidays were coming as as a youngster, and I think that that's what we should do next weekend. I'm going to give you much more structured. Anybody who's thinking about jumping on board, we got a ton of people. I just unfortunately they don't have the space, and I don't know if I could handle convers. I don't know if I could handle conversations of being the the MC of the situation, or would the system just everybody start talking over each other because that can happen, you know? So. I'm, I suppose allowing the three people in to chat and in fairness people were sound Sharon Gaz they jumped in they jumped out Mick jumped in jumped out some lad called Jambo who was fucking steamboats go look at the video the video is up on, on YouTube and it's on the Patreon page as well. is it on no it's only yeah it's on the Patreon page if you are a patron you can see it I think um, <laughs> he's fucking steamboats this lad but the audio is good. The audio is good. It's a good bit of crack. Like it'll sharpen up. Like I said, we'll come with more structure next week. Now we'll come with a bit more structure. Where it'll be bum 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 bum. We'll get it done in an hour, fifteen minute slots about this, that, and the other. And I think I th- I'm thinking school days. I'll confirm it during the week once I can kind of think up enough stuff. To be fair, I say I think up enough stuff. I could talk agnosium about the fucking mental shit my school schooling was and everybody's got a funny school story you know what I mean and that's what the whole purpose of the live royal rambles are it's not just it's not it's barely me talking at all it's just throwing it out to the floor I start get the ball rolling with a couple of stories everybody else then throws their stories in that's how it's kind of like I suppose being in a pub a bit isn't it not that I'm trying to create a fucking pub I'm not trying to create a pub it's still a live stream podcast which am I the only one doing it in Ireland I think so I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't know. Well, obviously Gordo's is the odd one, but I don't know. Am I the only one doing it? I fucking think... I'm the only one I can think of anyway that's doing a live stream podcast out to so many platforms. Cool. Fair play to you for getting on board. This might be the... It might be the beginning of a thing. We don't know. We don't know what's coming. We don't know when we're getting back into the real world again. Uh, So, keep contributing to the podcast if you can. If you're new to listen to this... This is uh, Tom O'Man here. Jump on board as a Patreon. Contribute to the show. It's not really to me. It's to fucking to the gang. To the community. Listen to me. Turn all fucking political and Maoist on you. It's for the greater good if we all get together, put a little bit in the pot, and then, you know. That commie bastard. Mm, Jesus. Oh, f- what was fucking hilarious was, and I this will tell you, oh, oh, Jesus, fuck, fuck off. I'm guessing it's it's just, it is an algorithm. It is a, a sensor or whatever that goes off. But Mick Conlon jumped on from the String Ninjas to play a tune. And his tune basically got picked up. I got like three emails last night from, or this morning from YouTube saying, look, we're not, um, we're not saying nothing. Like it was, it's, it's the fucking most passive aggressive bitchy sort of a fucking message. It's like we're, we're not saying you're in the wrong, okay? And you still could potentially make money from this. I don't monetize any of the fucking things. Like, and if by chance anybody sees a monetized video of mine, let me know, will you? Let me know because, uh, yeah. No, I'm not fucking... There's, uh, to give you the ex- explanation, it was explained to me like this. You need somewhere between 75000 to 120000 to make roughly about $100, no, is it even a hundred dollars? It's not. It's even. It's far less than that. So, 
I think we're okay just yet. <laughs> I think we're all right. The podcast on YouTube hasn't quite hit those, you know, heights just yet. So I, I won't be monetizing anything. I have broken up a bunch of uh, stand-up ones and they'll be going. I need to just top and tail them a small bit from the lounge. So just, just for people, just for an old giggle. There's one I want to do. It's uh, I want to throw up. It's like a two, three minute bit. I'm going to sling it up there. Later on today, I'll stick it on the old Patreon page. And this is why you should join the Patreon because you get into these things. You get extra stuff and all the rest of it. I was, so yeah, I don't know where they're going to pull the video. They were saying, we're not going to, it's okay. We're just saying, you know, that mm, possibly, you know, because Mick plays like well-known tunes and stuff like, and lo and behold, it's like, relax, lads. This is even on unlisted at the minute. For fuck's sake, relax, relax. In this day and age, a man playing on the violin, somebody's tune, would you ever fuck off? Just relax. But it, it's, it was the way it was written. It's like, oh, God. Excuse me. I don't mean to bother you, but I'm going to totally fucking bother you. Um, that video you put up last night. Um, it's, uh, you know, those two people that have watched it. Well, you know, you might owe money because of those two people that have watched it over on your Patreon page, you know, because it's, I'm just saying, like, no, no, hey, whoa, Jesus, don't get angry at me. I don't make the rules. It's just a case of fucking, you know, you you, you know, you might, you might, I'm just saying, be prepared. You, you mightn't get pulled on your butt, look. Relax, relax. Although in saying that, I put up on one time, from a TV show I was doing and uh, there was a tune in the middle of it that was just somebody whoever was producing obviously had it as a stock tune that they'd paid for or whatever that you can buy you can buy these stock tunes that aren't really released on radio or whatever but music makers that's what they do they they make up a stock tune for a minute and a half and you can use it as theme tunes the theme tune of this the theme tune of the Tom and Jerry show the theme tune of uh, Hard Nut Podcast yeah you, you can buy them you buy like a minute and a half and you can use whichever you want and you own you had the right to use it then. And that was obviously what the, these lads had done. I threw it up. And weirdly, out of nowhere, like months later, jumped on and went, I, I, I preferred this email. It was like, you have a fucking tune in the middle there and that fucking belongs to somebody. But relax, relax. Don't get fucking thick with us. What we're saying is, here's a tune similar. Do you want to use that? And we'll put it in over where this is in the middle of your video. It was re it was a fucking cool move out of YouTube. It was like, ah oh, yeah? That and it was just like an eerie kind of a <laughs> There was nothing in it. You know, you go, oh no, we need the word f- f- fucking horse box in that. It's not gonna work otherwise. But yeah, they that I thought that was cool. But the, the message I got this morning was like it was like, oh Jesus Christ almighty um, and like that we're getting another Hard Enough podcast done this week we are we were chatting we're getting another Hard Enough podcast done this week and the, the sound quality and everything will have picked up it'll have gotten schnazzier because I found another method again thanks to the Patreon affording me the opportunity to be able to fucking clean up the sounds on this thing look this is the beauty of it it's as organic as the spuds growing right behind the camera right now it's I'm, do you know what I suppose what it is is it's the everyman isn't it because maybe people want to believe like that last night there's no thought put into how the thing is fired up the steps you have to make, <laughs> make to just say hello to people and talk in front of them like that was the beauty of stand up you just show up hey what's the crack yeah, microphone please. just talk I, the, the fucking 18 steps and configure this to configure that to move it back here and do it and you miss one fucking thing and you look like a blurry fucking blob up at the top of the screen. Uh, you know, so. But I think it's everybody is learning along with me. They're kind of going, hey, I was there when he had zero clues. Now he's got one and a half clues. So it's an improvement. It's a 150 percent success rate so far. <laughs> I got a, a bunch of messages. Hold on, I'm going to take a slug of tea. I know. Rude. Oh, Jesus. God, I've been drinking way too much tea. Way... I've been just drinking too much anyway. Well, I haven't, I haven't, like... But I've got... I've very, very set, set drinks and set, set days and stuff. Which I kind of hate. 
because there's nothing like just going for impromptu pints. Do you know what I mean? Or impromptu, impromptu having a drink. I mean, I might have a drink, but in this environment we're in, I have to stay regimented or I'll go fucking bananas. I'd go off the fucking... Thank Jesus we have a child, a baby, because you have to stay regimented in that situation with him. You have to. Do you know what I mean? I'd say I'd be running around butt-ass naked fucking eating bark off trees at this stage. Oh, my Lord. Like, I would. I would have lost my marbles at this stage, just not able to fucking... Because when there's no structure, <laughs> I need structure. Tell me this structure or it all goes sideways on Tommy. So, the, I, yeah, I've been drinking, but I've been drinking tea like I'm keeping fucking berries in. And I will not. I will not. I know it's fucking hard times. You're fucking minding every penny. You're trying to fucking fight for every penny to make a penny here and make a fucking penny there. But I will not. And I cannot. Nor will I ever. Substitute my tea for some fucking half arse brand. I can't. I can't fucking do it. I can't do it. I have a few little pleasures left in this world, people. Do not ask me to have a fucking fnaffle fnaffle fucking tea. Or whatever kind of a breed of a bastard of yolk. It has to be berries. I didn't get into it properly with Owen Delastic because I think we moved on quickly from tea. But I'm, I'm going to draw him down on it this week. That <laughs> Lions for me, not even at the fucking races. Not saying that, you know. I mean, people like to make the whole, is it Dublin versus country? No, it's fucking Ireland versus a German company, actually. Because Lions, if you didn't know, and I think I've talked about this before, and I'm, I'll, I'll talk about it again. And I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Lions are owned by Unilever which are now owned by a German company. Unilever, which I think I've explained before. Let me get this right. It basically Uni and Lever came together. A Dutch and a British company. Yeah, I did. I explained this because they were a rubber plantation. Fucking chopping the arms off of poor old black lads out in the Congo, basically. And you're willing to drink that? Huh? Huh? Well, berries, I blow on cork and they're down there and they're making the tea bags. With holidays and oh Jesus, Cork! Uh, I'd love to fucking have a spin to Cork right now. Tip on down to Kinsale, and old fucking picture popped up the other day. It was the oldest one I could find. It was uh, you know you get these. I've been oh put up your ten of your best, and friends of mine who I know they're just throwing it out there, and they actually have the time and the inclination and the interest in putting up their ten favorite fucking albums that inspired them as a child. I can't remember two weeks ago. You know what I mean? In what I listen to, in the way of music. I can't, I can't, I can't. You know, music just doesn't mean that much to me. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. I like it. I like the noise of it. I like it going on a lot. But I have just never gotten nerdy about music. I've never gotten anorecky about music. But I got tagged a few times in this thing from couples who have been together since they were about fucking 12 by the looks of things. And... They're still together. And they put up, you know, earliest picture you can find. And it's, you know, them with fucking, like, full heads of hair. And, and that's just a whim. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, shiny, hopeful fucking heads on all of them. <laughs> and then I put up, like, I was I was avoiding it. Because, like, like, I started going out with herself when I was, like, 28 or 29. Like, you know, so, oh, like... You've kind of gotten all the knob, more or less, out of yourselves, haven't you? You know what I mean? For the want of a better... Pardon the pun. What? And it's definitely not the fucking gobshite that was 18 dating. You know what I mean? I'm not saying anybody who's listening going, Hey, 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 I'm still with ourselves. I'm still with himself since we were fucking 16. Yeah, grand. But have a look at the pictures of yourself. Think about your thought processes and the things that made you angry back then. I can't believe... He fucking hates Dawson's Creek. It's like he doesn't even know me. It's like he doesn't even know me. Are you fucking joking me right now? <sighs> My mother told me I look like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And he said he can't see it. He used those actual words. I can't see it myself. I mean, this is the guy I'm supposed to love. This is the guy I'm supposed to marry and have children with. <sighs> I don't want to wait for my life to be over. And I met herself when I was 
29. I, uh, well, I was make that sound like she was 18. She, <laughs> I haven't, I didn't actually clarify her age. I think herself is like 45 years younger than me. So she, is she four? She's four years younger than me. Yeah, so she, like she was what, 25, you know. Yeah, at 25, you know, as your parents will tell you, I had three mortgages and 19 children. There's only four of us. I gave away fucking 15 of them. So, I had 1,700 men under me. I was, you know, but at the same time, you, you're there's a big difference between 25 and 18. That's what I'm saying. So, I, the only picture, I, the, the earliest picture, it actually popped up from like eight years ago, seven or eight years ago, was, and a picture we actually, we well, fucking looked all right. I mean, all right. I remember the shirt I was wearing that day. I wouldn't fucking be wearing it around the place now. But, you know, it was grand. That's what it was. It was a grand picture. And it, I, I threw it up and I was like, ah, for fuck's sake, there's nothing wrong with that picture. I was like, yeah, but this is the earliest. Do you not realise? We didn't start, you know. But what it threw me back to was, oh, that particular time. Oh, we were. it was outside a pub called The Bullman in Kinsale. If you haven't been to Kinsale, go to Kinsale when you can get to Kinsale. Kinsale's the kind of place that, it's like the Hotel California. It's fucking hard to leave it, like. You know what I mean? It is hard to leave it. Several people I've met that live in Kinsale now, chefing and stuff like that, had just went, oh, we came here for a fucking weekend. And we didn't go home. So now we live here in Kinsale. And that's what Kinsale does. And it was outside a pub called The Bullman. It's right at the end of this windy little road that's sitting right on the fucking... I remember the same day somebody pulled up in the General Lee from the Dukes of Hazard, a replica of the General Lee. And pulled up in the fucking thing. And people were going, can I get photographs? Can I get photographs? And I was like, I'm getting a photograph. I had a couple of fucking pintings in me. And I wanted a photograph of the General Lee. I loved the Dukes of Hazard as a child. It spoke to me, guys. It was my Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And <laughs> my cousin's awful cute, don't you think? In her fucking hot pants. Which is, yeah, I mean, as a child, you don't really pick up on that creepiness. But it was fucking creepy. Anybody looking at the shadow on the side of my face right now, I will tell you here, if you listen to PJ Gallagher episode... I talked about having to cut a fucking tree down. Well, that's the other tree beside it that I felt guilty about cutting. And they're only all weeds of trees anyway. I didn't get to clarify that with PJ. So there's a big old dirty shadow on the side of my face. And that's that fucking tree is coming down. It's coming down. Fuck you. Right after this podcast. So I was about to go for my fucking spin in there. Or sit into the General Lee. Then... The two German birds that were in front of us, they, now total potluck and total bad luck. They sat in, one of them sat into the passenger side and she said, can I close the door and put down the window? Your man said, no worries, no problem at all. And she just pulled the door in, not particularly hard, but because it was an old American car, they are a piece of shit. And she, just as she closed the door in, the fucking window just dropped inside the door and shattered. Oh, that was the person right before I, and that was, you know that pic, you know that meme of that kid that comes running into the room like, and just sees sees whoever and goes oh and just, you know, and it's always like me seeing the boss, you know, on the way back from the jacks or whatever. That was me. It was like oh right back to the fucking pub, back to the pub because I don't know was he going to ask for money for that or what was the crack? But I was not fucking paying. I wasn't fucking paying, lads. Where do you get a, a window pane for a General Lee, a Dodge Charger, nineteen seventy whatever? Huh? Where the Christ do you go for one of them? Yeah, a Christ, I tell you. But it just threw me back to, oh God, wouldn't it be lovely to be down there now? Give it a look sometime. If you get to Kinsale, Kinsale's a special kind of a fucking place. It's a special place. It's just, oh Jesus Christ. Good times have been had in Kinsale, I can tell you. Oh, oh God, it brings me back. It brings me back. I did, I... Jeez, I've gone on longer than I expected. This is good. Oh, we're up, up in 20 odd minutes. Good. Good. I was wondering was I going to have anything to talk to you about. I've always got something to say. Even if it's just out shite. Which makes it beautifully titled. The Ramble Pod. Um, the Amst- the story about getting punched and knocked out. And Marie and a couple of people messaged. Uh, I didn't get to tell it. Because of course I got talked over on my own fucking show last night. <laughs> I got talked over. There was a moment in the show where I was. We were talking about being in different places. And I got knocked out. I did. I got like a spark. I got sparked for a minute. Um, maybe. Not a minute, you know, like five seconds or something. But I still got fucking sparked by a very, and I'm assuming, uh, lesbian. It was in Amsterdam. (laughs) 
We did, of course, the usual thing. It was a gang of us in Cork. This is just to fill you in with the story. There was a gang of us in when we were living in Cork. And we all decided one Friday night, we're going to Amsterdam next weekend, will we? We will. One of the boys organised it. The flights out of Cork at the time were half five on a Friday morning. Perfect. Not so perfect was the fact that the hotel, when we got there, wasn't ready for us till about three o'clock that day. So they left to store our bags. And what do a bunch of fucking patties do? You go and you find Dockers bars. We went and found, and we stayed on the rip. We were all good drinkers at the time. Stayed on the rip uh, throughout the day, right? Now, I wasn't a big fucking weed smoker. I have talked about this in the past. Not really able to handle it. Never got used to it. But fuck it. I was able to smoke an old fig in my head, right? So we go to this cafe around 11, 11 half to half 12, I'm guessing. It was roughly about that time. And we're passing around the doobie snakes, the doobensteins, and having an old good old time. And I remember thinking the lem- there was no beer to be had in there. But I remember getting a 7-Up and thinking, I don't think this stuff is working. But I remember thinking the 7-Up was the nice... I'm like, what are they doing with this Dutch 7-Up? It's fucking gorgeous. <laughs> Clearly it was kicking in. But one of the lads had gone to the Jacks. And we'd all been to the Jacks at some stage. But he'd come bursting out, pulling a total whitey. In an awful way. And all the lads started roaring laughing. He's like, fuck off, will you lads? Jesus. And he wasn't one of the softest lads, but he'd gone fierce soft. He was like, lads, would you, would you fuck off? The toilet is broken there. The fucking, the actual bowl. I can't, I, I'm going to shit my pants, lads. And all the lads fell around the place. Now, I would typically be one to fall around the place laughing as well. But for some reason, something came over me where I was going to be a superhero in this moment. I was like, Dave, come with me. You fucker, stop laughing at him. You know, like when your mother, you know, you fall over and all your friends are laughing or whatever, your mother picks you up and goes, hey, 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 stop laughing at him. Or a mother or somebody, you know. Go out the door anyway, up the fucking road, and I'm thinking, where to find the jacks? Like, like, 3%, I'd say, the brain was running on. And I'm holding Dave's hand, mid-twenties. Dave is probably closer to 30-odd. I'm holding Dave's hand. He's like, where are we going, Tom? I said, you are going to shit your pants if you don't get a toilet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He kept on... He had like a five... It was like Dory in Finding Nemo. He didn't realise that he had asked for this situation. So I, I rock on up to this bar. Looks like a bar. I'm like, Dave, okay, here's the game plan. We pop in. I get a small beer. You shoot straight to the jacks. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I swear to God, I opened the door, walked up to the bar. Dave is standing right beside me. I went, I'll have a small beer, please. And your woman's like, yeah? And what will your friend have? And I'm standing, I go, Dave? He goes, yeah? Dave, you're, you're supposed to be going to the toilet. Am I? Why? It's because you were going to shit yourself 30 seconds ago up in the fucking cafe. Oh, God, yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So off he goes. <laughs> off he goes. And his, she, I swear to God, had you drawn a picture of the angriest looking uh, lesbian in this woman, was it? She was... She had the same haircut as me, one on the sides, you know. She pretty much had one of my shorts, only she had ripped the sleeves off. No way had she cut the sleeves off. She actually ripped them off in just lesbianic fury. Lesbianic fury. That is the name of a movie somewhere. I'm, that's going to be the title of today's show. Even though the shows don't need, I don't put titles on them. This one's getting a title. Lesb- <laughs> so I sitting at a bar, and now the hash starts kicking in on me. The weed starts kicking in. And I'm fucking pulling a whitey. And I'm fucking falling asleep down onto the bar. Little do I know, time has gone in all directions. Because it would seem Dave is down there half an hour. Nobody else in the pub at this stage. Until it starts filling in with women. All holding hands. No men whatsoever. And your one had, had poked me about three or four times. Gone, sure you might. I'm doing, I'm doing South African because essentially it's Dutch. So <laughs> I can't think what the Dutch accent is like. I... Get your friend. I'm like, what? Now, Dave could hear all this because we went down the corridor. He recounted the whole thing. He didn't fall asleep once. I kept on falling asleep. I was like, what? And now, I had turned into Dave. I'd forgotten why I was in the bar. I'm there with my fucking half glass, just forward down on the counter. I mean, imagine looking at two cunts like that coming into you. Huh? And you you can be guaranteed that I wasn't the first she'd ever seen. Probably that day that was carrying on like that. Head down on the counter. About 10 minutes later, she pokes me again. Dave is... Getting, he's actually getting sick and shitting down in the fucking yoke and he's in an awful state but he's still laughing because he can hear me above and every so often you want to turn the music down she'd go hey 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 where's your friend and he couldn't get off the bowl 
he could literally he couldn't get off the ball. He was quite short, and the ball was actually it wasn't like in Ireland where the ball is a set height off the ground. This was bolted onto the fucking wall about four foot up in the air, so his legs were actually dangling off the side. <laughs> I only went in the next day to see this. I did not see the man actually on the ball, but it was only about the fifth time she woke me up. And I woke up, no, absolutely now not registering where I was. Woke up, and she went, hey. I went, what is it, boss? She goes, what you call me? I said, whoa, relax, man. And she goes, man? I went, yeah, dude. I mean, what's the, you know, what's the fucking problem? I was at the word dude. That was it. She'd had enough. And this fucking haymaker came over the counter. <laughs> And I don't know if you've ever been sparked. It's not a knockout. If you get sparked, you travel through time. There's a there's a fucking blackout moment of about about two seconds where your arse will leave the stool, or if you're standing, it's normally by a bar typically, and you all of a sudden you're on your arse and you don't feel any pain. You don't. Feel, you just don't know how you got from point A to point B, and it's it was only after that I realised what had happened. She's like, right, go get your friend. And out of nowhere, Dave comes bursting out of the jacks. I am still in whitey mode at this stage. And Dave <laughs> Dave had to ask me. She goes, did you punch? Did you? She goes, yeah, get the fuck out or I'll punch you too. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. The remainder of the day was a bit of a blur. I will, one of these days, write down the 24 hours. Because I found out since the 24 hours that went on from that... F- no, I would say the the 30 hours that went on. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know, maybe I should never put it live, actually, I actually, no, I take that back, I will never do it live, what went on that 30 hours, scandalous, so that's how I got knocked out by an angry Dutch lesbian, Um, it's always better when you have the fella shitting, telling the story, because I can only recount the bits where I woke up, but he tells the story brilliantly, Dave tells, because he can hear it down, he's crying while the smell of his own shite is me. <laughs> I should have put a disclaimer at the top of this. Don't be eating. It was making him sick. Um, so I, I think we avoided more or less a lot of Corona talk, didn't we? Huh? I think we did. We avoided it. We avoided a lot of... Yeah, fuck that. I mean, there's no point in going into the fucking Boris-y stuff and garden centres and all. I'm very excited. I have spuds behind the camera and I have carrots behind the camera. They're fucking busting out of the... I don't know what the crack is because I've never heard of them but I've onions par- put in the other one. But normally you put down like bulbs of onions. I put down seeds. I got onion seeds in a, in a gift pack. Onion seeds. I don't know. Are they going to do anything? They've done nothing so far while the spuds are flying it and the carrots are flying it. These could be like fucking, what do they call them? Circus ants. You know, the, oh look. Or snake oil of some sort. I think it may have been given a fucking, I don't, look, I will report back. But the excitement, the excitement in my life at the sight of carrots and what, every morning I'm out to them every morning I'm out to them as if they're a fucking herd of sheep as if I have to give them anything bar a bit of water that's it. that's it I've got no other responsibility with them but I did make the boxes they went in so I feel like their father <sighs> UFC was on this weekend ah huh? and one of the lads got to, they, I, I don't know how they got it sanctioned I suppose if they gave if you give them the bill of exactly what you're going to do fuck me that must that was some scrambling to get that worked around the clock like the backroom staff to write that up, even just to, as a proposal, when the whole world is shut down, no sports going on anywhere, to give that proposal over, and for him to go, yeah, actually that'll fucking work, that'll work. Shut down the whole hotel. They had cleaners going in and out of the rooms continuously with just full garb, spraying them all down, just cleaning everything continuously. And one of the fighters and his two cornermen ended up with with it. Now they're asymptomatic or whatever, so that fight was cancelled. But they tested everybody the day before blood and, and sh- schnout test or whatever it is they do. And they, yeah, it all went ahead. The man Tony Ferguson's face looked like fucking roast beef by the end of it. But there was something wrong with him. He wasn't right. Normally, maybe he's old. Maybe that's just it. He doesn't fu- he's constantly fucking being injured before fights. But or maybe he's just old. He wasn't ready for it or whatever. But your man fucking battered him. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, it was rough. Like, if you, if you, you can watch it back on YouTube. You can hear every fucking slap. And I don't think the commentators like Rogan and them, I don't think they're used to it. Hearing the fucking slaps over an empty, you know, theatre or what would you call it? Arena. To actually hear the crack. Like a proper slap. Like like that infuriated lesbianic slap that I got that time. 
But, <laughs> but like, <laughs> here we are, I'm slagging off fucking Tony Ferguson getting punched oh, like 250,000 times in the face by a pro fucking animal fighter. I get one clip on the chin off a fucking angry woman. <laughs> and I'm actually taking the piss. The neck of me. Right, that's it. I'm going to get out of here, gang. We've done our quota. We've done it. That was just a little, little, little touch up. I'm recording a buckshot tomorrow, so that'll be out Friday. Hopefully we'll get a hard enough podcast done between now and then, so I'll try and get it out. May or may not. I don't know. If it isn't the case, I'll shling up another Tom and Jerry show. If you're new to the podcast, of course, the Tom and Jerry show was one where myself and Jerry McBride of Watford Wishbers, uh, we had a podcast a couple of years back before podcasts were cool and shit, you know. And we, I, yeah, a bunch of episodes still there that aren't on general release at the minute. So I'm just going to throw up another one. The, most of the Patreons would probably have listened to them at this stage because I threw up the whole lot up over there. But I think just given the crisis that we are in, I just, I'm going to sling them up just to keep people entertained. So the video of this will be going up purely on Patreon. Uh, if, you know, if that's your, that's your bag, if you want to watch the video of this, it'll purely be on Patreon. So that's, those are the little sweeteners. Like I said, I don't think, do you know what, I, for the most part, and even talk with Gordo about this, I don't think for the most part people benefit from it. I don't know, if, like, I know people who have said to me, look, I prefer to listen to my podcast app and just wait. But podcasts, I typically put them out earlier for the Patreons and all the rest of it. And I think people appreciate that. I don't know if they avail of it, but I think people are just happy to contribute to the podcast because, you know, it's an interaction. I will reply to anybody who, who gets in contact with me. It's been busy of late, but fuck it. You'll get some sort of a smiley face or some sort of a sound out or a bit of chit-chat as best I can. You know what I mean? Because I owe it to you guys. So if you do want to support the show, sling a couple of dollars at the Patreon. It'll be down in the show notes below. It's patreon.com forward slash Tom O'Mahony Buckshot. There is merch there too, if that's your bag. The merch shop is there too. I don't know when they'll get it out to you. I'm just, well, from what I got, I got messaged anyway. I haven't gotten a picture. I asked for pictures. I haven't gotten pictures, but people have gotten what they ordered. They're about 10 days ago. People ordered gear, so it seems they've gotten to them. Handy enough. Uh, if you want to follow me on any of the usual platforms, Tom O'Mahony Comedy will find me most places. Do give them a follow. Give the Facebook page a follow. Give the Patreon, oh, well, if become a patron, or give the Twitter a follow, or what else am I on? YouTube, because the Watch my colours up, but the get the live stream will be going out on all of those when I do do a live stream. So hopefully I'll do one next Sunday. I'll put up. I'll do you know what? I'll decide before the weekend what subject we'll do, and let people jump on board for it. And we'll be out next Sunday. But I'll have a buckshot out for you on Friday, and I'll have something something else in between, whether it's hard enough podcast or a Tom and Jerry show. Jesus. Jesus, you'd swear I was fucking into this. I am actually. I need I need this. I need this, guys. I need this. So I will actually link something up for you. Again, if Hard No Podcast isn't on your podcast list, go find it. There's eight episodes up, soon to be a ninth. It's a bit of crack myself and fucking Owen Colgan. Everything else other than that, mind yourself, lads. Good luck. 